now entropy was disorder of a system and uh, uh, you had high entropy low entropy uh, uh, high entropy was stable low entropy was uh, unstable delta is positive moving towards high entropy delta is negative moving towards low entropy and uh, i told you about uh, the signs of entropy change that uh, when does entropy ch really change when solids like changes to liquid liquid changes to gas the disorder increases and uh, more gas moles are formed than disorder increases if a solid changes to a liquid or aqueous solution disorder would change so you can pretty much guess uh, we did some reactions as well and i told you why delta s was important that uh, delta s is related whenever you have entropy change uh, it's related to useful work that useful work is going to be produced uh, if delta s is positive because whenever a chemical reaction happens two things happen either heat is produced or taken in or a uh, disorder is created and that disorder can be converted into into useful into useful work so this is something that we did so i told you that i talked about cars running on fuel and I told you that, uh, in fact, uh, people think that heat energy is produced, but the reality is cars run on fuel because entropy increases. There's a lot of disorder created when a molecule burns and that, that disorder pushes this piston upwards and that's how, that's how uh, cars actually run. The heat energy is completely useless when, when, uh, when fuel burns. So we talked about this equation that uh, uh, we talked about how do you measure entropy change. And I told you that this formula is not really important because it's not, it's not a part of your syllabus. I mean, it's basically this formula that's part of your syllabus. So I told you that entropy change is basically measured in this way that it's the amount of work that is produced at a specific temperature. Uh, for example, uh, like turning liquid water into gas that would create disorder and the disorder is going to do work so it's going to be the work that's going to be produced at a specific uh, temperature that is somehow a that is kind of a measure of entropy and uh, and i also explained that energy is spent in two ways one is that kinetic energy of the particles increases uh, if kinetic energy of the particles increase then t then uh, temperature increases and the disorder would not increase like water at 10 centigrade water at 80 the disorder is kind of the same disorder increases when you have a breaking of bonds happening so we did all of that and we started talking about how to calculate delta s that was one formula that we did so i told you you'll be given a table in the exam in the question and you'll be given the entropies of the products and you'll be given the entropies of the reactants. So the entropy change would be the product entropy minus the reactant entropy. You just find the difference and that would give you the entropy change of a particular reaction. And yesterday we started talking about Gibbs free energy. I told you that Gibbs free energy is the total energy that's available to a particular system. And that's the total energy a system can uh, can produce energy in a number of ways uh, namely heat energy that's the enthalpy change for example you burn a match heat energy is produced or it could be the work that is produced or consumed due to entropy change and that work was minus t delta s so that together would be the combined i mean if you add them up that's the total available energy to a system so it's going to produce heat so, for example, if a car uh, in the car engine, if you burn petrol, it, it produces heat and at the same time, it also produces uh, work done due to entropy change as well. So, you had this Gibbs free energy, which was delta H minus T delta S. It's basically the sum. And I told you about the negative sign as well. Okay, why do you have a negative sign? Uh, that when delta S is positive, that means work is going to be produced so that would be exothermic hence energy is going to have a negative sign and we talked about delta g being uh, negative that would mean that the system negative means exothermic that would mean that the system overall would be uh, producing or out, uh, it would giving uh, 
it would be producing work and it doesn't need need energy from outside so that means the reaction would be very feasible if it's not feasible that means delta g is positive that means it needs energy for the reaction or whatever the process is for it to happen it needs energy so so it's not going to be spontaneous and we talked about as i said we started talking about predicting the sign of of delta s and i gave you the example of uh, this thing so we we're going to we're going to start doing questions now related to uh, related to entropy change just a second let me open the so we're pretty much done with entropy change we're, we're done with gift free energy as well so we will start with questions for example the first one and i think we did do this question can can we and we can try and do this uh, again very quickly so i've got uh, calculate the standard entropy of chlorine and it's supposed to show all your working that's uh, so we're going to try and calculate this it's a uh, i mean your entropy is of the products and you have to measure you have to take the difference so delta s is basically products minus reactants so quickly doing this so we can complete the whole question the entropy change is already given it's minus 225 dot 7 and the product entropy is SICL4 that's given over here that's 239 and minus the reactant entropies which are silicon that's 18.7 plus the so 18.7 plus two chlorines and that's not given so you need to find the entropy of the chlorines uh can you even do this quickly negative 223 Okay, this comes out to be negative 223. Okay, so just remember the first thing. Entropies of the products and entropies of the reactants are given. The entropy change is basically the difference of the two. Okay, is this clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Achha, then you have, why is the entropy change negative? Because uh, uh, gas moles decrease. like you have more gas over here uh this but in the products there is no gas so the disorder is decreasing now this part part d is saying the standard enthalpy change of formation of uh so now we have two things you've given uh i mean delta s was over there it's already calculated it's minus 225.7 so minus 225.7 and that's your delta s and now you also have now you also have the delta h that's also with you so is and delta hf of sicl4 so it's the same reaction he's talking about the same reaction delta hf of sicl4 is when one mole of sicl4 is formed from its constituent elements so it's the same reaction now you have both things he's saying reaction one is spontaneous at lower temperature but it is not spontaneous at a very high temperature so i mean i'm going to analyze this using gibbs free energy which is i mean i'm going to analyze this statement we know that delta g is delta h minus t delta s so how do you figure out at what temperature would the reaction be spontaneous uh, for a spontaneous reaction delta g has to come out to be negative that's the overall energy uh, of the system it has to come out come out to be exothermic so enthalpy change is given as minus 640 so that's uh, that's an, that's a negative value and so one of the terms is negative and what about just one second And similarly, what about uh, delta? Uh, sir, the reaction one is not spontaneous. So, then it will be positive. No, if reaction one is not spontaneous. No, it depends. Just I told you that. Uh, 
but the reactions are not inherently spontaneous or non-spontaneous. They basically depend on temperature. For example, turning liquid to gas, water liquid to water gas is spontaneous at very high temperatures. And it's not spontaneous at very low temperatures. Is this idea clear? Yes, sir. So, in this question, we have to do something that's similar that uh, they've given us the enthalpy change negative and they've given us the entropy change also, which is also negative. So, two negatives, I mean, if you have two negatives, they would combine to form a positive, right? So, is this clear? Yep. Take this part. So, one of the terms is negative. The other term is actually, it's actually coming out to be positive. Mohammed, Ethan, is this clear? Lubana, is this clear? Yeah. 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 So, both values are negative. Now, what you have to do is, he's saying that reaction one is spontaneous at a lower temperature. So, that means at a lower temperature, delta G comes out to be negative. And you want, if you want delta G to be negative, this term has to be small. I mean, there are two terms. One is negative and the other one is positive. Uh, you don't want a positive term in your expression. Uh, so, you want to keep it as small as possible so that the negative term dominates and delta G comes out to be negative. So, how do you keep de uh, this term, the positive term, how do you make it as small as possible? By keeping temperature as small as possible. So, hence, delta G would come out to be negative. It would come out to be spontaneous, but at a lower temperature. So, if the temperature is low, it's going to come out to be spontaneous. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. And I can I can do another example like this. Uh, for example, I'm trying to freeze something, right? So I'm trying to turn H2O liquid to uh, solid. Okay, this is what I'm trying to do. Now, uh, this particular reaction I mean, we know that it's spontaneous. So, when, when is this reaction spontaneous? High temperatures, low temperatures? No. Okay, so it's 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 obviously going to be low temperatures because freezing happens at low temperatures, and the higher the temperature, the less spontaneous would this. I mean, it would it would be impossible. It won't happen at higher temperatures. So, in this case, what would happen is, uh, so I'm going to justify that using the Gibbs free energy uh, equation, which is delta G is equal to delta H. What's the delta H of this? Is, this? is it exothermic or endothermic? Exo. So, this one is exo. What is, what is the sign of delta S? Is the disorder increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. decreasing. So, it's also, it's also negative, right? So, both of them are, are kind of negative. Uh, so, delta G is delta H. Say delta H positively? Consa delta? H. Need nee, liquid molecules would lose energy to form solid ice. Achha, Achha, anyway, so so delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Now, now I want to, uh, I know that this is spontaneous at low temperatures. TK, I just want to uh, come to the same conclusion using, using Gibbs free energy. So, this one is negative, right? And I want to make delta G negative, right? If delta G is negative, that means the reaction doesn't need energy from outside. And delta S is also negative. So, that means... Uh, two negative signs would kind of add up to be equal to a positive value. So, one of the terms is positive, the other one is negative. So, the only way delta G is going to come out to be negative is that if I keep the positive term as small as possible. Sir, why is delta G negative? The, I want it to be negative. Delta G is the overall, delta G, kya hota tha? delta G was the overall energy that's available to a system, right? A system produces heat energy, uh, that's the delta H, and the system, a reaction, produces entropy change, and that also produces work. 
So system produces work in two ways, right? So for the reaction to be spontaneous, the total energy that the system is uh, consuming or releasing that should come out to be negative. So that so that means it doesn't need energy from outside. Is this clear? Jeez, yes. Because if it comes out to be positive, that means it needs energy from outside and it's not going to happen unless you provide it with that energy. So anyways, we, uh, we, we've reached the conclusion. We want the positive term to be as small as possible. Only then would delta G come out to be negative. That would indicate that the reaction is spontaneous. So, so the T has to be kept as small as possible so that our positive term is as small as possible. So keep temperature small. Okay, is this clear? Yes. Yes. So then you have uh, where's the question? Just a second. I said, anyways, that wasn't even the question. I just wanted to justify that uh, the reaction is spontaneous at lower temperatures. Now, the next, basically he's asking you to calculate the temperature above which reaction one is not spontaneous. Now, the first thing is, he's asking when is the reaction not spontaneous? So, when is the reaction not spontaneous? When the value of delta G comes out to be positive. If it's not feasible, if the delta G comes out to be greater than zero. And what is delta G? Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. So that means delta H minus T delta S must come out to be greater than zero. Then the reaction is not going to be spontaneous. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to keep delta H minus T delta S. You want a positive value. You want it to be not spontaneous. That's what you're looking for. So delta G must come out to be greater than zero. So that means delta H minus T delta S must come out to be, it must come out to be greater than zero. Now he's already given us the values of, uh, of uh, enthalpy change. That's minus 640. And rem remember one of the values is in kilojoules. The other one is in joules. Uh, entropy change, the unit is joules per mole per Kelvin. So you have to keep the units the same. So if this is minus 640, the enthalpy change is minus 640 kilojoules. Take okay, this one. So I'm going to turn it into joules. And minus T delta S. Delta S is minus 225. Sir, delta G should be uh, less than zero, right? Greater than zero. No, either, the problem is he's asking for when is the reaction not spontaneous. I say, anyways, this would come out to be greater than zero and try and solve this. So it's going to be minus 640, uh, thousand. And the other side, it's going to be T times uh, minus 225.7, right? You have to solve this inequality. And remember one thing about these inequalities is that if you multiply or divide by a negative value, uh, the inequality changes its, uh, I mean, becomes the opposite inequality. Like for this, I would have to divide both sides by minus 225.7, right? So that means if I divide it with the negative value, the sign changes. So this would become, T would become greater than minus 640,000. Two twenty five dot seven. TK, is this clear? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, what do you what do you get? Negative twenty eight thirty five. No, no, you're not going to get negative, it's the negative would get cancelled out. Twenty eight thirty five. Two eight three five Calvins. Right? So D comes out to be greater, but be very careful that the inequality sign changes if you divide or, or multiply by a negative value. The reason is that if you have three and five, uh, five is greater, right? 
but if you multiply or divide with the negative value uh, the sign changes so minus 3 and f minus 5 now minus 3 is the bigger value okay so always remember if the sign changes the inequality switches it changes as well so be careful about this as anyways let uh, giving an answer should we we will be matlab, giving them this inequality that t is greater than 285 can you direct answer you listen he was asking calculate the temperature above which uh, above which the reaction one is not spontaneous it's 2835 calvins okay so matlab, this inequality matlab, doesn't matter really matlab, agar hum change kare ya na kare to doesn't really matter Nee, it would, I mean, right now, in this case, it wouldn't matter because he's already talking about temperature above which. Like, if he hadn't told you okay, what temperature is, so is it below 2835 or above 2835? You wouldn't know. Clear? Okay. Uh, let's do another uh, delta G question. Uh, just one second. Okay, so... So this one is a similar question. He's saying amide bonds can also be formed by reacting acyl chlorides with amine. So whatever the reaction is, we don't we don't care. The delta H is given. He's saying calculate the minimum entropy change delta S for this reaction to be spontaneous at 298 Kelvins. So you want the reaction to be spontaneous. You want delta G to be less than zero, right? So what is delta G? Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. You want this to be less than zero substitute the values the the enthalpy change is given uh, so it's a uh, minus six i'm going to convert that since we have to find entropy change so i'm going to convert that into minus six thousand joules the temperature is given it's 298 kelvins so that is given and multiplied by delta s he was asking for the delta s that's required for the reaction to be spontaneous and you can, uh, so it's minus 6,000. Uh, this thing goes over there. It's 298 into delta S, delta S. Get 298 over here. And that would give you delta S. So what do we get? 20.1. Yeah, so delta S and negative, right? It has to be greater than negative. Uh, it has to be greater than minus 20.1 joules per mole per Kelvin or joules per Kelvin per mole. So is this clear as well? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so next one is... Uh, Again, it's a question about delta G. Uh, this time he's asking, uh, find delta G, give give delta G values, right? So delta G is again, delta H minus T delta is nothing different. Uh, so if you have the delta H, so I'm going to convert that into, I'm going to, because delta G is usually in kilojoules, so I'm going to keep it in kilojoules. So it's minus 602 kilojoules. Uh, the temperature is 25 centigrade. It should be in Kelvins. So make it 298 Kelvins. Add 273 to it. So it becomes 298 Kelvins. Multiply that by uh, multiply that by delta S. Uh, and the delta S is not there. But so you can find delta S. You can you would have to find delta S. Delta S is products minus reactants. So try finding the delta S because we need that. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to calculate delta G. So the entropies are given. So the product is uh, 32.7 minus the reactants, which are uh, Mg is, uh, I got this wrong. So it's 26.9 minus uh, 32.7 and half of O2. So that's uh half of 205 so what are we getting for delta s
minus one zero eight point three. You're getting minus one zero eight point three, and remember that's in joules. Uh, that's in joules. So convert that into kilojoules. So you divide that by one thousand, because I I kept this in kilojoules, so I'm going to keep this in kilojoules as well. So it's T delta S, and the negative and the negative would cancel each other out. So that's plus. Six hundred thirty-four point seven. Minus or plus? Plus. Okay, never mind. I made a mistake. I said, did anyone do this? Negative five sixty-nine point seven. That's yeah. neg negative five sixty-nine point seven. Five sixty nine point seven and it's in kilojoules, right? It's in kilojoules per mole. TK, so be careful with the signs. I said so now you're saying describe and explain what happens to the entropy of a gas when the temperature is increased. First thing entropy increases. And remember I told you about gases? Uh, what's the reason? Why does entropy increase? I told you about, uh, where's the sketch? I said, I told you about gases. That solids and liquids, they don't expand. But if you heat a gas, the gas expands. Right? It expands. So that would create further disorder. So, so, so the amount of disorder doesn't really change with temperature much. Uh, but the amount of disorder continues to kind of slightly change as you keep on increasing temperature. Uh, so why why does this happen? This happens because gases, they expand. So entropy increases. Uh, as gas uh, expands, and its particles, they overcome intermolecular forces. So the particles, they continue to overcome intermolecular forces and the gas continues to expand. That's the next one. Let's, uh, I said this one is, you just have to find, I mean, your, your delta H and your delta S are both given and you just have to find delta G at 298 Kelvin. So it's going to be, 117 minus T times delta S, so it's 298. Delta S should be kept in kilojoules, so it's going to be 175 divided by 1000. Can somebody tell me quickly what the value is? What are we getting? Sixty-four point eight five plus. <clears throat> G, sir. Yeah. I said it's coming out. It's coming out to be plus. So, uh, use your explain whether or not this reaction is spontaneous. Spontaneous or not? Uh, yes, it is. Me, me. Uh, it's not spontaneous. It's coming out to be positive. It needs energy. Overall, it needs energy. So, delta G is pos is is positive. So hence, it's not, it's not spontaneous. It requires energy from outside. Uh, let me try and find. Uh, now you're saying, how does the feasibility of this reaction change as the temperature increases? So this is a two more qualitative question. So which reaction is he talking about? I think he's talking about this reaction. Uh, now, 
is saying how would would the spontaneity of the reaction change if temperature increases or decreases so first thing is we have to calculate delta s now in this reaction delta g is already calculated so i'm going to use the same delta h minus t delta s uh, delta g is known it's 51 kilojoules per mole Uh, delta H is also known, that's uh, 241 kilojoules per mole. And the temperature is 1000 kelvins, right? So we can figure out delta S, T delta S. Can you try and calculate? Uh, And delta S value that you're going to get in this is, is going to come out to be in kilojoules because everything else is in kilojoules. 0.19. So delta S comes out to be 0 0.19. And in joules, in joules or kilojoules? Kilojoules. So it comes out to be 0 0.19 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. You can convert it. It's it's going to come out to be nineteen hundred, I think. Ni kya One ninety. I think it's going to come yes, out to one ninety. So in in joules per Kelvin per mole, it's going to come out to be one ninety. So anyways, that's a positive value, right? And we, without even solving the question, we could have predicted that it's, uh, it's going to be a positive value because disorder is increasing. There's three moles of gas. And over here, there are five moles of gas. So the disorder is kind of increasing. It's uh, there's more and more disorder. So delta S is positive, uh, and delta H is also positive. I mean, both these things are positive. So how would the reaction? How would delta G vary with temperature? Both values are positive. So delta H is positive. That's given. The delta S we calculated is also coming out to be positive. So that means this entire expression would actually come out to be negative. So one of the terms is positive, the other one is negative. So if I increase temperature, what's going to happen? Is delta G going to become negative or positive? Negative. Right, if you, because if you increase temperature, the negative term actually becomes bigger. So it's going to dominate and delta G would become more and more negative. So uh, how does the spontaneity, it would become more and more spontaneous if you keep on increasing temperature. The reaction would become more spontaneous as uh, minus T delta S would have a bigger negative value. Is this clear? So yeah, temperature, sure. uh, why does increasing temperature increases uh, gives value negative term? I mean, T is the factor now. I mean, this part. But again, again, if, if T is zero, so the negative term, there would be no negative term in the expression. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue uh, tomorrow then. We're going to do some more questions and then we're going to to a different topic, TK. Just remember there are three, four things. Uh, predicting the sign of delta S, uh, measuring delta S by using product minus reactants. If S is given, uh, then you have uh, delta G, which is delta H minus T delta S. So here, let's, uh, let's continue tomorrow then. Okay, thank you. Okay, take care. Love is. Love is.